Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel where we take on all kinds of questions you have about narcissism. And this one, in fact, is a question that someone emailed in that I thought was quite compelling. The question is, why do narcissists get bored so easily? And before I go on to answer that, I ask you to join what I hope is not a boring YouTube channel. Please subscribe, hit that button, hit that bell if you want to get notifications as well. So let's talk about this. Why do they get bored so easily? I'm sure many of you have noticed this dynamic in the narcissistic people in your life. Now, like I said, this question came by way of someone who reached out. And it's actually a really great question. Something that comes up a lot because it can be particularly frustrating this dynamic, particularly if it's your close, it's, it's your partner, it could be any relationship, but definitely if it's your partner, they're, them getting, their boredom is a real issue. Now, narcissists tend to have, they, they tend to be what we call reward sensitive. And by that, we mean they're sort of dopamine junkies. They like rewardy stuff and reward sets off the dopamine systems in our brain. Healthy people, are able to inhibit their responses in favor of longer term goals and aspirations. They're just better able to delay gratification. Delaying gratification and narcissism rarely appear in the same sentence. For a narcissistic individual, because they like reward, they like that, their novelty seeking and their reward seeking means that they easily get bored with new things and new people pretty quickly. It could be hypothesized that the reward sensitivity that we see in narcissists and their novelty seeking may in part explain why they have a greater likelihood of engaging in impulsive novelty seeking behavior in a whole variety of ways. Drugs and alcohol, gambling, uh, sexual acting out, spending and shopping and eating. They engage in pleasure first and then face consequences later, if ever, because it seems like they're so good at getting away with it. A great anecdote that I would love to share with you. It's a sort of an interesting story. Through a strange confluence of circumstances, it was years ago, I was invited to some really odd, but like big Hollywood party. I actually hate parties and I'm an introvert, but I was so curious because I'd never been asked to go to such a thing. And it felt literally like an anthropological opportunity to study what something would be like this. So I grabbed an equally cynical friend to be my date and we went to this party. The, peop the party was focused on a group of people and it's, they're a rather famous group of people in the television industry. And there were even cameras and things like that and, and elements of this party were being filmed. Uh, you know, so there was lights, camera, action kind of thing. These people at the center of the action, as you'd expect for people in sort of Hollywood, they were beautiful and draped in designer this and designer that and everything perfect and sculpted and air kissing and finger waving and their admirers and lots of narcissistic supply. But what was more interesting to witness at this bizarre party was how quickly this group of people seemed bored. There was a king's feast around them. I mean, I was literally shoving food in my purse for later. It was delicious. Honestly, it was one of the most beautiful settings I had ever seen. Someone with a really fancy house and they, the gardens, it was just beautiful. And it's clearly people had put so much time and effort into decorating it and all of these small details. I'd never seen anything like this and I was just sort of taking it in. But these people at the center of it, they didn't seem to notice any of it. In a very short period of time, despite the music and the people and the activity, they became very bored after all of their glammy air kissing, honestly, they were just sort of sitting, looking like deflated balloons as they sat on a couch and they rudely dismissed the unfortunate servers who were offering them various appetizers and things from a tray. And they just sat there and they were staring at their phones. I don't know these people. I just only know this public image they had. So who the hell knows if they're narcissistic? I'd be willing to take the bet that they probably are, but their reputations were well known and they were definitely known to be rather vapid, inane, superficial, contemptuous people. So I'd say not very nice. 
probability is that they're probably quite narcissistic. But understanding the narcissist's tendency to get bored so easily can actually help you understand love bombing as well. When they first meet you, when a narcissistic first person first meets you, you're new. And your newness is what makes you interesting in part. It's not you, it's your new, that you're new. Your compliments to them are new. Your face to them are new. You are a new challenge. But like all new things, you're going to become well-worn with time. That's what happens. And they are going to get bored. And that's when the devalue and the discard happen. You can feel it. And they'll often gaslight you and say, listen, it feels like you seem bored. And they'll say, I'm not bored. It's a really, it really plays with your mind. People in relationships with narcissists who have cheated will wonder what it's about, what the cheating is about. They will feel their marriage or their relationship has actually been good enough that they are having sex regularly. And they will say that actually the person, their partner, their narcissistic partner had the affair with actually wasn't even all that. It's the novelty. And it is often why narcissists will put their world at such risk. The next shiny thing they meet is so compelling and the narcissist's lack of empathy is so vast that they don't think about, sorry, my cat's about to spill something, that they don't think about what their indiscretion costs other people. The narcissist's tendency to get bored can leave you feeling that your relationship is always a sinking ship. It's always teetering and you have to jump around and be exciting and keep them engaged lest that they get bored. I know that when I have been friends with or in relationships with narcissistic people, I would actually quite regularly find myself always feeling that I had to perform, that I had to tell them something exciting and new rather than sort of feeling like that sharing my rather ordinary day in my ordinary life, in my ordinary way, I didn't think that would ever be enough. So it just always felt like you were, you were trying to tell stories. With a healthy person, your ordinary day is more than enough. But with a narcissist, you always feel like you're trying to entertain them. And that relates to their likelihood of boredom. The big fear is that the next person that they meet, when they leave you, the devalue and the discard, the next person they meet is not going to be as boring. The next person is going to be boring. You know why? Because time is time. And as time passes, they are always going to want something new. It's for this reason that narcissists can so often seem a little restless, almost a little agitated. They are always waiting for the next new thing. They're like a child who has a playroom full of toys, but they always covet the toy that they don't have. So keep in mind, when you are relating to a narcissist, it's not you who is bored, boring. They are bored with everything. They are contemptuous of everything, unless it's something that they've chosen to, to put up in value. And they live in a world that is never enough. That they want life to be a kaleidoscope of drama and entertainment all the time. And because people who are narcissistic never really go deep with their emotions, and they, and because they're not able to be mindful and appreciative of what's right there, they're always questing for the next big thing. People who can go deep in their close relationships find that even the ordinary becomes extraordinary. But for people in relationships with narcissists, this dynamic of their boredom and their constant need for the, again, the next big thing can actually be something that's very unsettling. I'd be curious to hear, was boredom a part of your narcissistic relationship? Let us know in the comments. And thanks again for tuning in.